Hey everybody, it's Tesla Gaijin again. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about supercharging. Uh, I had an opportunity about 10 days ago to uh, try it out, and that's because a couple days ago I went on a road trip, my first road trip. But before I went on the road trip uh, with my beautiful wife, I'll call her Tesla Jun, before I went, um, decided to go ahead and give it a try because there is a charging station only about 10 minutes from here. So I went to the Yokohama Service Center and uh, tried out the supercharger. Now that they said there are four stations at their supercharger and uh, each one is supposedly able to do 120 kilowatts. Well, um, I thought I'd give it a shot and so I went there, just took a quick drive. And this time was just a test, so I only put in about 100 kilometers worth of electricity. So that took a total of um, 11 minutes. And the charge was 431 yen, which is about four bucks. Uh, this was because this charging session was very fast and it was when the battery was at a lower level. So when a battery is being charged from say 40% or 50% to, the, to about 70, it's pretty quick. And uh, at that time, and so when you do go ahead and connect it, I found out that there's two tiers that they charge you at. Uh, tier one is below 60 kilowatt hours, uh, 60 kilowatts. Uh, and tier two is above 60 kilowatts. So that means it's not the amount of charge that you are getting, but how many minutes you're connected. And that amount of charge can fluctuate. So this was a, a good learning experience for me. Well, when um, this time when I went to test it out, it was all at the tier two level. And so the more expensive, which is 41 yen per minute. And that would be nice if it was really fast. It's a maximum 120. And when I first plugged in the supercharger, it, it immediately started charging at like 105, 102, something like that. And I thought, wow, it's really quick. But within a minute or two, that came down to about 65 kilowatts or 63 kilowatts, somewhere around there, which is just barely in the tier two level, which means if it had been 100 the full 11 minutes, I would have gotten a lot more charge. But because it was down to the 65 level, um, got a little bit less than I expected. And in reality, my home charger, because we have an evening rate for our electricity, charging at home is a lot less expensive, especially if it's at the tier two level. Uh, now, if it had gone, if I could set it to go down to tier one, it would have probably gone up close to that same 60 watt, uh, 60 kilowatt level. So it would have been a half the price, so for near the same amount of juice. Well, this is a learning experience. I'm gonna see if I can find a way to limit the amount of uh, kilowatts that are being uh, dumped into the car. And so I'll, I'll get you up to date on that when I find out. I uh, also found out a new thing, and that is, is that there's an idle fee. If you leave your car after the supercharging is done, in other words, if you have set, say, a charge up to 80%, and it does that in 10 or 15 minutes, and you leave your car there and you go somewhere for a bite and you come back, you might be getting an idle fee, which also has two levels, both of which are quite a bit more expensive than the actual charging. Well, I can understand. Tesla doesn't want you just leaving your car there in like a parking lot. But um, fortunately, uh, I did leave it for a few minutes beyond and I think there's a five minute grace period but I did learn that uh, you don't want to do that because in this case, there are four stations. If it's more than 50% full, you will get this idle charge after five minutes. So that means if you are taking up one of four and another car comes, I don't know if they start charging at 50% or if it's a third car comes and then all of a sudden you are liable. But I don't want to find out about that. I will make sure and uh, have the ch car uh, my app tell me your car is done, which it does. So I did go ahead on this trip and I will explain a lot more about the trip again, but basically we went to a place that is about 120 kilometers from here. And um, we went with 100% charge. We arrived there 
using about 120 kilometers worth of electricity at more than 100% efficiency. So on a cool day, on a flat road, you get very good uh, mileage. Um, so that hundred, from that 120, we went there and it would only charge at uh, tier one, in other words, the slower speed. And I wanted to get it up to, uh, as up to 100. So to get from about 75% up to 100% at the slow speed took almost an hour. And even though the, it was tier one prices, it was still 60, 58 minutes of time. So it was actually kind of expensive. On the way home, we had used a lot more charge going up the mountain and then coming down even. But uh, by that time, it had gone down to like 25%. And so charging from there, it was at tier two for a while for high speed charging. And then as it got closer to our uh, set limit, it started to go down to tier one. So we had both of this. So I got to experience those charging differences, tier one, tier two. I also got to use my phone app that told me, your car is near charging, five more minutes, you better come and get your car. And so I did, and I parked in the public parking lot very close to it. So I got to experience a lot about supercharging. I uh, also got to learn that the car, if you are set in your navigation system to go to a supercharger, it tells you um, about 15 minutes before you arrive that it's preconditioning the battery for a high-speed charge. Honestly, I'm not quite exactly sure what that means. Unless it's really cold or really hot, I'm not sure if it makes any difference whatsoever. But nonetheless, it does prepare the battery for supercharging before you get there. So I learned a little bit about this, and as I get more experience, I'll tell you some more, and I'll tell you, uh, hopefully I don't get to tell you about getting charged idle fees, but I will tell you more about my supercharging experiences as time goes on, and I will try to tweak it a little bit and see if I can make it a, an even nicer experience. Altogether, it was a good experience. I, I learned a lot, it, it worked out just fine, everything was really good, uh, except that charging at home is less expensive. And that's really all I need to know is when I'm at home, charge at home. If I'm going on a trip, suck it up. You got to pay the supercharger fees. Still, it was quite a bit less expensive than a gasoline car. So I'll take it. Anyway, this is Tesla Gaijin saying goodbye and see you again.